It's time for us to get started, family. It's time for us to get started. Yes, yes, y'all. And you don't stop what? to the rhythm that makes your body rock. This is Brother Hot Tim coming at you live, coming at you live, coming at you live, coming at you live. Hey, family, we just about to go down. It's Tribal Quotes Day. It's Tribal Quotes Day. But first, I need to let you know you are not rocking with the best. This is Giami Journey Media. <laughs> Of course, you know this is a Heart of a Summer production, and we are on those tribal quotes, and I'm your host, Brother Hot Tim. And you Why know. We start to love your own paradise. Alright, let's go out. Y'all gonna take some time. I'm gonna get a shot of that Phoenix. That Phoenix blood. That Phoenix blood ambrosia, that ancient, ancient ambrosia, that ambrosia that has been brewing for months and months and months and months. That is there to heal and to clean you out. So we're going to give some of y'all some time to catch up with us because the messages, the messages are going out. We're going to take us a shot. Mm. Ah! You want to try it? Yeah. Coming. Coming soon, family. We got us an app. Yep, we got us an app to help promote this whole speaker piece. We got us an app, so the app will be coming soon. Gina about to try it. Uh-oh. So second message is out. I'm about to try it. You want to try it too? Mm-hmm. Yummy. Don't a lot. No. Let's start with that. All right, good evening. Once again, we got somebody up. Somebody out there on Spreaker yet? Go ahead, take that shot. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, so we up here taking shots of that ambrosia. About to get that water. We're going to let this music play. And we're going to get our discussion started. Yeah, of course I did. What's going on with the music? Something's going on with my studio, family. Hold on. Uh -uh. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. See what's going on. Redo. Paste. Uh, count. Now let's do this. Let's log out. We'll log out. And then log back in. See if that'll work. Yes. Are you sure you want to log out? Yep. I don't know what's going on. The music wasn't playing. So we're going to try it again. We're going to try it again. And then we're going to get started, family. So right now, you can go and get you some water. Get you some water. What's going on with Uber Conference? Uber Conference is even acting up. Oh, my kids, man. I know my kids got something to do with this. I don't know what's going on with the music. But my kids did something. Hey, we listen to music all day. It looks like you, not us. Oh, my God.
the hell that is, family. So, we having some technical issues here. <laughs> Got any ideas of what's going on? Let's try that. Because... Here we go. All right, I figured it out. Here we go, family. Let's get this going. Shout out to Brother Tara. Thank you for doing this. Stop. This real life is Beyond Me Journey. Family is up. We're getting things going. Family t shirts will be coming soon. Working on those. T shirts will be coming soon. We're going to have this freaker app. We're going to have an app, family. We're going to have an app. Second time, but this time I think we're going to be a little bit more successful with the app. We're going to keep it going. Lines are open. Lines are open. That's the uh, Proverbs of the Night. from Giamme Tribe family. We are up and we are live. I'm surrounded by my kids. It's real life here at Giamme Journey. want to send shouts out to Patara, um, Navita Nelson, and any of the other Daily Toasters that are out there. I want to send out a salute to each and every last one of y'all. I want to say, hey, family, 
Let me go and do that. Get it out. Get it out the way. Y'all deserve it. The numbers are high enough. The numbers are high enough for us to be able to do it now. It's something I should have shared on the timeline. I didn't get a chance to share it, but there is a comic book that um, actually was Elder Green that sent it to me. Elder Daryl Green that sent it to me. Um, and what's going on, the name of it is Kids to Kings. It's on YouTube, and you also could donate, or you could buy the comic book. This, listen, family, this series is cold. This series is cold. This series is cold, and I, and I think, if especially if you have young people, you like comic books, I think that you will enjoy it, especially those of you who who like history, those of you that um they put a beautiful spin on Kemet and 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 and, and Kush. And I think y'all need to check that out. It's Kids to Kings. Um they recently changed their name, but they have um one of the books on YouTube and you go through and you can read it. Excellent read. Um I d I'm donating so on a monthly basis I'm gonna get stuff sent to me. So I'm um, you know I'm I'm up on it. So I'm gonna keep y'all informed. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna get Cleveland and some of the other young people to start reading because I think part of the Warriors training is I think that we are going to pick up and start reading a little bit of that. Shouts out to my sister uh, Lavina. I see you out there. So all right, family, let's let's do this because I don't know whether some people are scared or shy. I don't know what's going on. Oh, and once again, let me announce: we are going to we are moving to the app. So eventually. Y'all won't even have to turn on the Facebook piece. Y'all just gonna y'all get a signal on Facebook letting you know I'm on. You go on and go straight to your app and bring you straight here, straight for the conversation. Straight for the conversation. And you'll be able to text information out just as quickly as if you was on Facebook. And we could stay in contact and it'll be a lot easier because you can listen to it while you on the go. Because this show was originally started as a podcast. I, you know, I like the whole Facebook piece because, you know, it, it brought a whole new audience. It brought people, made people aware of what I'm doing. But I don't never want to lose that podcast feel. You understand what I'm saying? The podcast, getting that information out. So, also, family, be on the lookout. We are presently working on putting together a newsletter, slowly but surely, because we want to make sure we do it right. Um, so, I'm talking, talking with some of the family members. And um, trying to get that together for y'all in, in a proper fashion. So, there's going to be plenty of reasons for you to kind of just be supporting Gianni. Because like I said, we're trying to get that 15 passenger. We're trying to get those tents. We're trying to get all this stuff because it's time for us to go to another level. It's time for us to stop playing. It's time for us to either shit or get off the pot. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody else is shitting. They ain't just sitting on the pot. They shitting and, and it just so happened that they shitting on us. Right, and we got to be very clear about this. Everybody is working towards their own benefit, and we need to start doing the same thing. We need to first turn our principles inward. So now I got some T-shirts. I got some T-shirts ideas. I'm gonna send. I gotta send a couple of them in. But first, I gotta I gotta do this this these batches of a uh, tea. That's what I was working on. That's why I'm kind of a little bit late today because I'm working on the batches of tea so I can put together this that ambrosia, right? Cause I'm trying. I got that. I got that. Twelve pounds of honey. I'm gonna go get some more honey. I'm on. Um. I'm going to go and get the first daily toaster T-shirt made, so we could drop the prices, right? Cause right now, because what I'm paying right now is fifty dollars. It look like this shit glow, glow in the dark. Why? Well, you know, I ain't want one to glow in the dark. It shouldn't glow. Shit, this shit glow in the dark. All right, just checking. I was, I was gonna be mad, right? Shouts out to Elder Alona, right? So now I had. I was I had to push these off. At about fifty dollars because they were so expensive. But now, Sister Navita done um, volunteered her time and, and her equipment, and she she has provided me with a place where I could go and print them up ourselves now. So it's local, right? And because it's local, and because we're doing it, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. So I'm trying to get it get it to a price point of about fifteen dollars. So we're gonna be able to do it. We're gonna have the Jamie Journey T-shirt. We're going to have the Giammi Journey hats. We, we're about to do it, family. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. All right. Read it to them. Okay, Gina. You can read it to them. Gina want to read, y'all. 
So let's encourage them while they're young. Go ahead. Daily toast is where we. You gotta have. say it louder. They can't hear you. Daily t toast is where we gather daily to remember those upon whose shoulders we stand. This is deeper. Well, oh, directly. Directly stand. Okay. Good job, Gina. Good job, Gina. Shout out to Nanny Bongo. All right. Uh, yeah, um, Nanny Bongo. All right. Well, no, that's another dude. All right. Somebody, we had somebody tuning in with us from Spain. You know what I'm saying? But here we go, family. Let's get into these, let's get into these proverbs. We are on day 33. Day 33. Out of the book, Giami Journey Workbook, Tribal Quotes. If you go to giamijourney.com and look in the top tabs, you'll see the book is available. Like I said, if you can get it and support the journey, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you very much. If you if you can't afford it, we'll work away. We'll work for work on a way of getting it to you because we own it. God damn it. We, we put it together. We own it. And like I said, I believe, you know what I'm saying, that we got to spread the knowledge by all means necessary. You know, so let's get let's get this discussion on. All right. So here they here, here they come. Success is a journey, not a destination. They said this is by a quote by a dude by the name of Ben Sweetland. The next one is find a meaningful need and feel it better than anyone else. This is success. Author unknown. And the last one, the eyes of the soul, the eyes of the soul of the multitude are unable to endure the vision of the divine. That's from Plato. So, uh, it's on you, family. So, what you want to do? Choose a number between one and three. Which one you want to start with? We can start with whatever one you want. I'll wait for y'all. I'm going to drink some water. Take a y'all and wait for somebody to post up a number between one and three. Number between one and three. Come on, fam. You don't have to say nothing, but you can post up a number. I wonder how to load. Same with you, Spreaker. Post up a number. One, two, three, first, one, between one, two, or the number three, first number that pops up on the screen is the number that I'll do. Three, uh-oh, number one popped up first. Success is a journey, not a destination. All right, very simple, very simple, but very profound, right? Because a lot of us, we get caught up in thinking that success is a place to go, right? It's a place that we, we got to be. But that kind of limit our ability to succeed because we paint a picture of what we think success looks like. But oftentimes, when we reach for success, family, it often morphs. It, it, it often changes. And if we are not open, if, we not, if we're not in the understanding that it's a process. It's the journey, and it's not the destination. It's not a. It's not a town called success. That if we get caught up in trying to get to the town of success, we'll miss all of the success that's along the path that's laid out for us. We we become blind. It's like we're we're moving with blinders on. Success is a process. Success is the journey. You know what I'm saying? It's not the destination. It's not the end point because. And because and cause even when you get to the place that you think success is, you find that there's something else beyond that. So we got to, we got to stay mobile in, in our mind state. We got to stay flexible in our mind state. Some of us get fixed because we think that success is one way. We think success just means, it just means a lot of money, right? Because one of the things that, that, that has really been on my mind is that my whole life, my whole life I've been striving to be rich. You know. Certain things I wouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? But 
I've always strived to be rich. I thought that businessman was supposed to be just, gee, you're supposed to be wealthy. And this is the image that they're throwing out for us. That's a destination for me. But all along my journey, I had different opportunities to be wealthy. Sometimes I stopped and, and paid attention. Other times I didn't. Because I thought it was about how much money you had in the bank. You understand what I'm saying? So I limited, I froze, or I crystallized my idea of success. And it had a dollar amount attached to it. In many cases, not even realizing that I was successful where I already was. I was wealthy already where I was. It didn't have a dollar sign attached to it. But the wealth was there. The opportunities was there. The relationships were there. And sometimes I would move right past them. Some, uh, other times, I would go on and enjoy them and be able to do it. But, I'm a, you know, a lot of times I miss the fact that I was already, I was on the journey towards it. And one of the things that um, I want to make sure our young people start to understand is that when we start talking about success, there's no dollar amount attached to it. Because check this out, man. What's wrong with owning a business that's, that produces for you? It might not be producing millions, but it produces for you. See, we kind of scare our young people away because that's not the way it's supposed to be. Because if I'm a successful businessman, I'm supposed to be able to drive a Bentley. I'm supposed to have a private jet. See, because these are the images that they throw out for our young people. And they put the, they crystallize this whole idea of success. And they put a dollar tag on it, which in a sense robs our children and robs us of a true, a true view of success. Let me, a, a true view of, of what's, what's the term they use? Is it success? Yeah, a true view of success. They ruin the journey. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking down the path and surrounded by opportunities, not looking at them because they don't have a dollar sign attached to them. They don't have the, the fancy cars attached to them. I'm moving right past that, and I'm just trying to get to the Bentley. You know what I'm saying? The income that's going to produce enough for the Bentley. But do you know... Do you know that if you look at other communities, there are thousands and thousands of small business men and women that are surviving, that are living a good and happy life. And we're not making we're, we're not letting our young people know about these people. We're, we're missing them because we're getting caught up and we're seeing in the TV where motherfuckers is able to jump on jet planes and have big gold chains and, and rap and have have the women or the men or the, of their choice and shit like that. Because these are the images they need you to see. Why? Because it keeps you from laying the foundations in the community that we need. In order for some of us to be rich, some of us have to go and start those basic staple and stable businesses to keep the community alive, to keep the life, to keep the blood flow moving. What's the blood flow, brother Hot Tim? The blood flow is the economic resources. Is the econ is is the is in a sense the money. Is the blood flow of the community, the exchange of resources. Let's even take it deeper than just money. It's the exchange of resources and skills that is the blood of the community. Now, when you got people that's able to understand that it takes for every thousand small businessmen and business women, there might be one millionaire. Because those small businessmen and businesswomen make it possible for that next generation or that one person that might come from their generation to rise up to a point of prominence. Now, now, and the best part about that is that this one that starts making money is not making so much more money than everybody else that he's able to treat those individuals like serfs. What happens in our community is that the motherfucker gets a, gets a lump sum and everybody got their hand out. Because we're working for other people because because they, they're going to pay us with what they can get away with. Right? And some of us even get into these jobs and be like, oh man, I made it. I'm successful, blah, blah, blah. And that's not even it. You know what I'm saying? That's that that's not it. You know what I'm saying? You you got that, you still got that dollar sign attached to what you're doing. And I'm not saying that money is not um a major thing is not an important aspect of doing what you do 
it is a thing, but it's not the main thing. You understand what I'm saying? It's not the main thing. And we need to take it out of being the main thing. So the proverb, the proverb, success is a journey, not a destination. We got to understand, family, that once we, because like as a group, as individuals, we got to definitely understand, but as a group, we got to understand this. You know what I'm saying? When people are like, what's success look like? That shit, it's a journey. You know what I'm saying? How do you? How, how will we know when we're free? We, we never, get, we, we never get there because the, the the freedom is in the journey. The success is in the journey. We got to keep it moving. We got to keep moving. We got to keep uh, because as long as we on the journey, we are able to experience the success. As soon as we stop, as soon as we settle down and think that we got it, that's when we start losing it. All right. So I'm gonna move. So, so the next number that popped up was the number three. And they say the eyes of the soul of the multitudes are un unable to endure the vision of the divine. Now, we got to remember when, it was, when this was written, right? See, because one of the reasons for a lot of secret societies were, were I mean, we had, we, all cultures have a group of individuals that come together and, and form a society that can guide the culture guide and protect the culture from itself and from others alright so for thousands of years the ancestors realized that certain people could not accept accept um, the divine being being exposed to the divine right because for a lot of us it will crack your head some of the stuff that will be exposed to you when you really start understanding and learning how to see the divine it's there it's right before you but you might not be able to accept it because you have once again we're going back to that crystallized mind state we're looking for god in a certain way when God is not crystallized, you know what I'm saying? We're looking, we're looking for that certain thing. We're looking for those certain qualities. And when we experience the divine, it, it, we, we start to lose that idea, that crystallized idea. And, and for some of us, that's all we got. You understand what I'm saying? So when some people get exposed to the divine, they lose everything, including themselves. Because they're not ready for it. Moving towards towards a level to where you're able to see the divine is a process of is a process of initiation and it's a constant prep is a constant preparation. Right? This is why in um the old testament only certain people would be like only the, the, the high priest would even be able to be in the holy of holies. Because it was said that when the creator showed up, when God or Jehovah showed up in there if you were not prepared, you would be burnt. You know what I'm saying? You would you would basically just be consumed by fire. And that's just that's that's letting you know that you have to be prepared for that. And all of humanity and all of the multitude is not willing to do the work that is necessary to do that. To be able to be in the presence of the divine in a, in a consistent, regular manner. Right, so now, and a lot of that is metaphorical, because the actual burning up, right, the actual burning up, because in a sense, in order to really commune with the divine, you have to be willing to die. Let me say that again. In order to really chill with the divine, you have to be willing to die. Right, I, and I know a lot of, I mean, because I hope not. Just, just, just stay with me for a second. Right. Because the imagery, when you look at it, the imagery, when you come face to face with God, right? When you come face to face with that divine force, it's like a fire consuming you. It's like death, right? And that is a metaphor for what happens to an individual when they come into contact with the divine. Because when you come into the contact with the divine, what you thought was you, what you thought was the world is destroyed. So in a sense, you are consumed by this divine thing. This, the, 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 
you, you are exposed to it and it's so shocking that it wakes you up. All right, brother Kwame said, consider the considerable details of the ritualistic prep before entering the holy. Now, I mean the, I mean that that alone was crazy. Think about the years and years of training that an individual had to go through in the mystery systems, or, or that as we call it, the mystery system in Kemet. Hell, let's look at how long some of the, if you even just look at some of the stuff that go on in the Yoruba religion, right? Or you look at some of, you look at all of the initiatory um, systems throughout cultures. Look at how long individuals had to be initiated, how long they had to be prepared before they even was able to, you know, like you said, enter the Holy of Holies. Why? Because they had to prepare their mind. And in many ways, that preparation of the mind was emptying it of the expectation. Because when you walk upon the divine with the expectations, you're in for a shock. You're in for a shock. I mean, just, I mean, some of the stories that you hear just blow your mind. I mean, because it's like, I went, I, I, because like, like I said, I, Just get prepared, family. Because some of y'all, some of y'all, I mean, just by the fact of you coming to contact with with the circle of people that you come into contact with, you're being prepared to be to be exposed to divine. And let me say this to you. It's hard. I can't even put it in words. When it happens, you won't know it. Right? Nobody can explain it to you. You just have to be prepared. You got to, in a sense, empty your cup so that you can receive. Hell, it's going to break the cup any goddamn way. It's going to shatter all of your... I mean, you can't go in... You can't have any expectations because it's going to be... It's, and it's going to be humbling. Humbling. Right? So, and and a lot of the masses are not, not really ready to be humble. You see, because we build up who we are on the fact of being able to compare ourselves with others or being described about being described to ourselves by others we build up this whole image right and in many cases in order to go to the divine you have to all that you got to get rid of all that that's your your, your personality is 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 a full cup your ego is a is a is a full cup and they all have to be shattered. They all have to be broken so that you can be able to even go before the divine. This is why the ancients taught what Plato right here, what he probably plagiarized. The eyes of the soul of the multitudes are unable to endure the vision of the divine. Because it takes great work to, 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 even, have the, to even have the vision. Let alone endure. Right? How you going? You, you know what I'm saying? You and many of us. We, we want to stay stuck in, in, in our illusions because our illusions, in a sense, inform us about who we are. They, they, they keep us comfortable, even though they're just illusions. This is why I ask us, and I keep going back to this one, being able to distinguish the real from the unreal. This is this is why they, this is why they talk about in those virtues, control of control, control of thought, control of actions. Right? Control of thought. Being able being able to steal the thinking process. Being understanding and being able to stop and empty that. Right? Being able to control your actions. Not just control what you do, but just to do nothing sometimes. Cause a lot of times, family, we do we do we do we do things just to stay busy. Why? Because we we're afraid, or we we're not. How can I put it? We innately know that we're not ready to go into the holy of holies. And what do you mean, brother? I tell when you start traveling inside of you, when you start taking that time for self exploration, you're going into the holy of holies. But once again, we got drop, we got drop all of these. All these we gotta drop a lot of that shit. And we gotta start going in 
and, and, and taking a sip. And then moving from being able to take a sip to taking a couple of sips. And move from, from, from taking a, a couple of sips to being able to drink a small cup. Like, like a take a shot. And being able to move from taking a shot to being able to, to, to take a cup. And be moving from taking a cup to being able to take four cups to eventually to where you're getting up to a cup like this and you're able to just sip on a divine. But most people don't have the the capacity. Or I, I ain't gonna say we got the capacity, we don't have the will to stay focused. The will to stay engaged. Within us, all right. So I'm gonna um, go on and do number two, and I'm gonna let y'all go. All right, let me finish. Let me let me finish taking my sip. Mm -mm -mm. Once again, family, the app is coming. The app is coming. I will let everybody know. I will be sending it out so that y'all go on and at least at least just download the app. You know what I'm saying? Just download the app, share it on your timeline so that people know. That Jamie John, I'm let them know we're not playing. Last one is number two. Find a meaningful need and feel it better than anyone else. This is success. Damn, today was one based on success, right? Finding that need. You know what I'm saying? What do our people need? You know what I'm saying? One of the things that I was I was looking for, I'm like, damn, I'm looking for a healthy drink. Something that I could drink with the young people. But yet got enough kick to where, you know, um, I'm cool. That's how the Ambrosia come, came about. Player's Pyramid. I needed something that I could use to write all of the papers that I saw coming in college. Shit, create the Player's Pyramid. Damn, I saw, I saw a need for a rites of passage process, right? A different type of rites of passage process, right? For young men. And young women, so created. Uh, I created Giami Journey Media. Right, finding that need, finding your niche. What's up, Gina? Oh, um, you, your computer's off. Okay, thank you. Finding that need and being able to fulfill it better than anybody else. Finding that hole, and now family, and, and, and I want y'all to think about this. See, because. Like I said, we go straight to slave mind state. And what do I mean? We look at serving others first rather than serving ourselves first. And when I say ourselves, I'm talking about us as a group. So every business idea we have, when we're talking to our peers and we talk to our families, the first thing that comes out of our mouth is, can everybody use this? I want y'all to think about it. Can everybody, you know what I'm saying? You, God forbid you come up with an idea that you're going to help your people first. Mm. I mean, and I want y'all to understand, we the only people that had these type of conversations. Well, can everybody use it? Why only black people can use it? Yeah, I ain't say nothing about only, only black people, but only black people be interested in that. What the fuck wrong with that? See, the slave mindset tells us as a people that we have to be able to serve everybody. That's slavery. No, we need to be able to cre create shit that's directly unique and helps us. Now, if other people could benefit from it, then so be it. This is how everybody else do business. We start by doing business amongst ourselves. The service, either... Other people find out about it and they want to get it. We always want to open up our gates. We always want to open up our borders. We always want to, to, to appeal to everybody first rather than appealing to us. And I'm saying, yo, it's time, it's, it's, it's time for that to die. We need to open up small services that work with us. This is why, this is why I've been thinking all this time. Be like, damn, I've been, I, I had the game all fucked up. I'm sitting up here trying to, trying to get rich when really all I need to do is be able to, to make a living and be able to pass the living on to Cleve and no, no telling what Cleve can do with it. And what if he don't become rich? But what if he's able to, to, to raise a family on the bit? Will we have failed? 
Let's say he wouldn't be able to buy a a a, 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 a Viper or whatever one one of them stupid ass cars. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he was still able to buy something that kept him mobile and was able to invest in a house that he could raise a family in. Would he be a failure? Would I be a failure? Let's say that with GME Journey, I was able to provide myself and maybe five other people with some employment. But yet, I'm you know I'm not able to jump out and, and, and buy the latest car. I'm still driving a used car, and 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 I'm still every now and then struggling with with with, with some money issues. You know what I'm saying? But yet, I'm able to provide for my family. Am I a failure? I can't buy the I can't buy the jewelry, you know what I'm saying? I can't go out to the club and pop bottles and shit. Am I a failure? Right? But my kids never miss a meal. I'm always able to get my kids to the, to school. I'm able to keep my car running and keep it fixed. And yet, I got a small little business that's servicing my people. And if other people want to take advantage of it and use it, I'm not stopping them. See, we have a whole bunch of holes in our hearts. We have a whole bunch of holes in our minds. And we have to start finding ways to patch them up. And we have to start learning how to work with each other before we even can capitalize on work with other people. Because some we become so good at serving other people that we no longer know how to serve us. I see it in every business that we're involved in. I see it amongst every line of of business in every line of profession where we become so good at serving others that we almost forget how to serve ourselves. And when we start serving ourselves and we we start feeling guilty, we start feeling bad because the rest of the world need to benefit from this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you know, I mean... I, I, I developed that ambrosia for us. Now, if other people want to partake, by all means, I, I'll work with you. But this shit is ours. This, this is ours. You know what I'm saying? And am I a failure for that? You know what I'm saying? I remember when, I, I remember, because uh, I, I, w- I wanted to help Nomo with the food co-op and I and I told normal I said dude man I mean we we doing we doing the food co-op and you know and and, and why can't we turn the food co-op into a grocery store and 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 and, 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 and strive to get rich normal looked at me and said man, I don't want no damn grocery store I just want to do the food co-op and for a long time I didn't understand that shit you know what I'm saying? Because with the food co-op, he was serving a certain population. And because he was serving a certain population, he was able to build relationships. And because he was able to build relationships, he was able to be happy. But I couldn't see it. You know why? Because my whole life I was told that it's about the money. Get the money, nigga. Get the money. Fuck the friendships. Fuck the relationships. Fuck the... Get the money. Or, or as the as the young people say now, get the bag. When the business, when you really think about it, when businesses was never, it, it was, it's not even about that. It's not even about that. And I know some of y'all ain't gonna get that. Cause it's like, oh man, it's always about, but it's not always about, it's not about that. Business. Business. Is developed or is it? It comes up in a culture to allow the flow, uh, uh, to allow that blood to flow through the culture. It those those resources is the blood, and it allows the blood to move from one place to another place to another place to another place. And the blood can be rich. The blood can be it can be plentiful, and it can provide for a lot of a lot of different people. Right? But once one starts taking all the money, that becomes a tumor within the body of the community. And the whole body becomes all balanced. So when we start, because this is the issue, family wealth 
has to be a community thing. If we're going to get it and if we're going to build the wealth, because I'm not against, and I don't want y'all to think that I'm against that I'm against getting getting that bread. I'm not against getting that bread, but I'm I'm against us teaching our kids and teach and telling ourselves that that's the first thing. That's the first thing. And because it's the first thing, it overshadows the relationships. It overshadows the the it overshadows the true the true purpose of business. The true purpose, the true purpose of business is to facilitate trade. And in facilitating that trade, what it does, it it makes sure that the community, that the tribe can continue to exist. It helps exchange ideas. Yeah, some people get some people can get wealth. Right? But when if if you're in a community as you start getting wealthy, you start buying more stuff from other people, which causes them to get wealthy. But no, we don't trade within our community. No, we, we're servicing everybody else. Oh, you just can't start a business servicing black people. We all done heard that shit. We all done heard that shit. You can't do that. Oh, that's going to fail. going to fail. And perhaps a lot of those businesses may fail because what we servicing is something that our community don't need it's catering to our it's catering to our wants and not to our needs because family let me tell you we always gonna have problems until we conquer some staples until it's some shit that we decide that we will never buy from anybody else i don't give a fuck how much cheap i will never see and i and i the, the one business i'm saying we need to go on and corner the market on is lotion we will not buy lotion from anybody outside of us. I don't give a fuck if you got a factory and you're producing it. You sell that shit to your people. We gonna either we gonna produce lotion or we gonna use other things that that PR people can produce. But we could buy it from our people. Our people can produce it. Our people can refine it. Right. Our people can package it. And it's a, it's a staple. You could build off of that. We starting businesses you can't build shit off of. You know what I'm saying? And when I say staples, I ain't talking about electronics. Electronics is not a staple because all these electronics go out right now and, 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 and we still going to live. We need shit that when it leaves, we all going to feel that shit. If, if you don't got air conditioning in, in, in the summertime... In that hot ass house, you gonna feel it. I, although you can live without it. If you don't have a fan in the summer, you can feel it. Staples. If you don't have no rice, no fish, staples. No tobacco. Even though I, you know. No alcohol. I want you to look at some of these businesses, family. Those those business, I know some y'all, you don't need alcohol, but alcohol for a long time was, I'm going to stop. I ain't going to even go into that, so I'm going to leave that alone. All right, family, but hey, I'm not going to hold y'all up anymore. I'm going to thank you for, for tuning in. And remember, we got to, we got to, we are on Ujima today. You're supposed to, you're supposed to um, turn on your reticular formation, right? And get out there and look for Ujima, that cooperative economics, right? Where's it going on in our community? And like I said, we need to really start establishing some staples, family, that we we only buy from us. I, I it, it boggles my mind that we're we're buying hair care products from people who who don't know shit or give a fuck about our hair. We 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 have cornered the ash business, right? You know what I'm saying? We should we need to corner the ash business because nobody ashes up like us. Well, like us. Miss Regina says, that is the way I feel about philanthropy in our community. We all need money. Philanthropy is a stable and is a vehicle for self-determination and nation building. Philanthropy. Giving, like, for example, coming and being able to ask for money. Right? I, I feel it. You know. Um, so, thank you, Miss Regina. I don't know if I have any of your ancestors on the list, but if you were to um, um, type them in, here or you go to six one four three hundred one eight seven five. 
That's 614-300-1875. Give it a call. Text the number. Don't call me on that not line. Let me say just text um, hashtag ancestors or hashtag daily toast and put your ancestors name in there and I will be it will be a pleasure for me to toast your ancestors. Same for you, Natty Bongo. Uh, Swerry Moon Star. You know what I'm saying? It'll be an honor for me to toast your ancestors. All right. Um, so family, I am going to get up. I want to thank all of y'all um for, for tuning in and those of you that's coming in the future. Uh, remember to join me for the daily toast for Nia. What? No, folk tales for grown folks is on Kooji Chagalia. For those that don't understand the language, you got to learn the language. Get with me. Hit me up. Ask some questions. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe I can hook you up with one of my, you know, get get you in contact with one of my young per, one of my young people because we have to quiz our young people so you can start asking them those questions so that I can see if they are doing their studies. Right? Because we have we have our own language and it's developing and it's not nothing nothing out of space and shit. It's just we took words and we're applying words and and different stories to different situations, different proverbs to different situations, so that we can understand it. Everybody don't have to understand what we're saying amongst ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's one of those resources, right? Um, as a nation, we have to develop stable historically. Um, um, uh, what is a what is a nation? A stable historical, historically developed community of people with territory, economic life, distinctive culture, language, and common. We have a distinctive culture. Right now, we got slightly a language in common. Now we need to st- develop that economic life and that territory, and that's what we trying to do in Giamme. That's why I keep on coming to you. Actually, y'all, actually, y'all be like, you know, I know some of y'all be like, man, you always ask for some money, right? If I had it, I wouldn't ask. And I'm also giving my money as well. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's for the tents or, and I salute every last one of y'all for supporting us. For the Malcolm X Festival, but y'all know the Marcus Garvey Festival is coming, so I took a, I took a break because I know some of y'all some of y'all got to refresh those pockets, right? But it's important, family, that we start learning and, and I'm not 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 just learning, but putting these cultural stabilizers into effect. When we celebrate these holidays, when we celebrate these days, and we celebrate these people, we we. We we stabilize who we are. We stabilize. We help stabilize the culture because we give people a place where they could come, right? And we got to we we got to really work on that. All right, um, all right, family. Once again, uh, this is Brother Hot Tim. Want to thank y'all, and I want to say peace. Make sure you like, share, and um, come back. So once again, you are now rocking with Giami Journey Media. <laughs> I am your host, Brother Hot Tim. This has been Tribal Quotes. And, of course, you know there's a Heart of Summer production. By the way, hold on, hold on. By the way, will we salute those sisters out there in Simpson Land? One more. Nah, say it again. Say it now, baby.